Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom and today I've got more from the May 2023 Brimfield Flea Market. First up, here's something I've never seen before at a flea market, as far as I remember. A huge collection of vintage toasters. I'm sure I've never seen this many toasters in one place before, especially vintage ones like this. I really don't know anything about them, but they look to me to probably be from, I don't know, the 30s, 40s, 50s mostly? I think it would probably be fun to try a toaster like this. I'm just worried it would burn my house down. caught my eye. This is a Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Tony the Tiger clock from about 2006 as far as I can tell. I thought it was older than that but it actually is from 2006. And I only saw one on eBay that had sold and it sold brand new in the original box for $35 plus $10 shipping. And that light around the edge uh, actually glows either red or orange. It's hard to tell in the picture. Oh okay. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, Thanks. I love it. I didn't want to get rid of it, but my wife is time to get rid of your clock collection. And yeah. So I gotta, I gotta remove it. Yeah. <laughs> Does it just light up white light, or is it colored? Since I've had it, I never had the power cord, so oh, okay. I don't know the color. I, I got that maybe about five years ago. Yeah. And I just, to be honest with you, been lazy get, trying to get a cord. I just, I just loved it when I first saw it. I yeah, it's neat. It, so. I, uh, what are you asking on that? Uh, what, do you, what do you think is fair? What, I mean, I've no without knowing 20, if it I works. Twenty five dollars, twenty dollars, twenty bucks. I know I paid more than that, but I I, I just I yeah. have to get rid of it. So twenty bucks. All right. I, I felt yeah, and no, I'll think about it. Yeah. Thanks. It's not a bad price, but we don't know if it works, and he's missing the power adapter, so I decided okay, to pass. Find more stuff too. Obviously, we could, you know, do a bundle. Yeah. I got a lot of you know, neat stuff. So does Kevin. Yep. Kevin has a lot of good stuff. This is Kevin right there. Oh, okay. Hey, how are you? Thanks. All right. Thanks. Do you collect any anything else in particular? Or, or no, nothing yeah. too particular. Yeah. Lots of just... anything that, like, interests you? Yeah, like 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s I stuff nice, mostly. I got a complete old Yahtzee game over there. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. It's one of the originals. It's uh, it's worth it's worth a lot. I mean, hmm. I let that go, too. Uh, an old old uh, putter uh, putting return. Yeah. That's from the 60s. Oh geez. Yeah, it's it's wow. that's in the box straight ahead. Uh, yeah. Perfect condition. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. No I thanks. I'll. Games, right? And I got I got, obviously have some old comic books, but uh, those are yeah. mostly like Walt Disney, the Del, Del. Yep. Yep. I don't know if you're a comic guy or anything like that. Yeah, a little bit here and there. Okay, thank you. It's a pretty cool old stamp steel toy. I'm guessing probably from the 50s or 60s. And my favorite airplane of all time, the SR-71 Blackbird. That's pretty nice. <laughs> oh, it's a sleigh. You know who would love this? It's a sleigh. You know who would love this? One thing I've been on the hunt for recently is a vintage gumball machine, kind of like these here. But I want to make sure that they're glass containers, not plastic like the one on the right, because I don't think the plastic ones are vintage, as far as I know. And I'm also looking for a good price. Those were 180 which is on the high side. Uh, they may be worth it, but that's more than I'm currently willing to spend. Well, That does not look safe. That's no. a coil there. That would heat up and get red, I'm assuming. Yes, it does. Yes, I've seen that. That's where I think you call <clears throat> That's a hot plate. Yeah. It's an old one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's probably a new plug. But yeah, but that wire is old. Yeah. Want a casket? 
I get why some people collect funeraria, which is, I guess, yeah. what you call it, but I find it so creepy. I find it interesting to look at, but I would never collect it. I really like this antique Coca-Cola vending machine. It kind of looks like it's probably from the 50s, but I would say almost certainly it's been restored. The color looks just way too bright to be original. Here's another thing that I'm really interested in, but I know almost nothing about. It's antique bicycles like this. I'm guessing it's from the 50s or 60s, but beyond that, I really don't know much about them, what they're worth, how rare they may or may not be. But I love looking at them, especially the red ones like that. They always remind me of the bike from Kiwi's Big Adventure. No, I knew there was a bunch. Here's something else I've never seen before for sale. This is a World War II Japanese battle flag. And I looked them up online. Apparently, they only go for maybe a couple hundred dollars, which seems low to me. I would have thought they would have gone for quite a bit more than that. I know I probably bring this up in almost every flea market video, but I'm really into character glasses. And they had a nice selection here. They actually had a couple that I've never seen before. Like this one right here. At first I thought this was the Nesquik Bunny, um, but it's spelled differently. Nesquik Bunny is spelled Q-U-I-K. This is Q-U-I-C-K. And the bunny looks different, of course. I also didn't see any date on it. The tag on the glass says it's the uh, Quick Rabbit. But I did a Google search and I couldn't find anything regarding a Quick Rabbit like that or a Quick Mart that had that logo. So I really don't know what that is. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. Oh. Here's a 1977 Captain Crook McDonald's glass. And you see these pretty much everywhere. Almost every flea market has these. But amazingly, I do not have a complete set, uh, so I decided to pick one up. And he actually has 15 copies of this Captain Crook. So I made sure to get the one that was in the best condition. He also had a few of these 1973 Looney Tunes Pepsi glasses, which I actually do have an almost complete set of. I'm just missing that one controversial character. Hey. Good. You had a tag of four dollars for these, sure, yeah. and you have eight on this. Would you take ten for the two? Okay. All right. Thought that was a pretty good deal. Happy with that. Disney World glass. My friends can make anything you want. Nerf, Nerf, Nerf guns. Oh, it's ammo Nerf for the Nerf gun. Yeah. Believe me, I understand. It'll look good in your front yard. Come back and buy it.
Here's an 87 Donruss Barry Bonds rookie card for 10 bucks. Does anybody else remember back in the 90s and probably early 2000s when that was worth way more than that? And he's got multiples of it. Back in the 90s, this would be a, a gold mine. If you found these for 10 bucks, you'd be flipping out. Nowadays, they're not worth much more than that. Unless they're graded in very high condition, like 9 or higher. Does anybody know what this Mickey and Minnie Mouse thing is here? I was thinking maybe a lunchbox, but it's not shaped like any lunchbox I've ever seen. And I can't really imagine what else you would keep in it. This vendor is at Brimfield every year, as far as I know, and he's always in this same spot. He's got a lot of great stuff, a lot of very small items, which, you know, I don't collect every type of thing he has for sale here, but there's always something in here for everybody because there's just so much of it. We'll put him on, we'll put him on the table. No, I know there was a bunch. Now, here's something I wish I had bought in hindsight. This is a set of McDonald's Olympic pins from 1988. It's a limited edition proof set. He had two different sets here. Uh, it looks like 25 apiece. The thing that was throwing me off was that the boxes were in such horrible condition, but I've seen on eBay the pins themselves go for about $10 each. And complete sets are going for, looks like $70 to $100. So I probably should have picked those up. Hopefully they'll be there next time. Right. No, I think so. Yeah. You know, this is where I, 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 I scan to try to find the bird. Look at the wrong way down there. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's a vending machine I've never seen before. This is apparently from 1960. It's Marvin the Talking Robot. And according to the internet, these go for about two to four hundred dollars. What did it dispense? When I first I saw know. it, I just thought it was something new that somebody had painted up, but apparently it was no, a real it thing. Works I've seen a lot of Christmas blow mold figures for sale at flea markets recently, but I've never seen a Winnie the Pooh Santa. I thought these were kind of cool. These are old Heathkit GW31 transceiver radios, or basically walkie-talkies, from about 1962, 1963 or so. 
He was asking 65 for the pair, which seems to be a little bit on the high side based on eBay sales. Um, they sold for as low as $10 for the pair, up to about 60, but the average seems to be in the $40 range for these. No, I knew there was a bunch. If you look in the distance there, you can see that yellow stereo. That is a Weltron Model 2001 eight track player, and it looks to be Model 2003 speakers to go with it. He's asking 600 for the whole set, which I thought was pretty high, but I went on eBay and the eight track player itself goes for about 200 to 250 and the speakers are also about 250 so 600 really isn't that crazy it's more than i'm willing to spend but you know apparently it's worth about that much and this lightsaber here appears to be a 2010 hasbro force effects obi-wan kenobi signature lightsaber he's got 75 on it which at the time i thought was high but i looked up on ebay afterwards and this one's going for more than that um, if it has the original box they're going for over 100 so 75 like that is probably a pretty good deal And who out there remembers this? I remember it being called Magic Sand. This is called Super Sand. I'm guessing it's the same thing. Basically, it was sand that would stay dry underwater and you could build with it. I remember playing with that quite a bit back in the early 80s. Here's a nice selection of old Tonka trucks and other similar type toy trucks. I love this one here, this orange tractor trailer with this weird cab on it. Did they ever make tractor trailers with cabs like that? If they did, I've never seen one. No, it's not. Yeah. It's a CD collection. But it's made to look like an old Dell comic book. That's how the, it, used to, it would say Dell there. And oh, okay. That's what it would look like. All the old shows. Oh, yeah. These would be funny to watch. I don't know. What is it? DVDs? No, it's CDs, so it's music. Yes, they were singers. Yep. <clears throat> Toy nightstick, so you can pretend you're a police officer. Oh, great. <laughs> I don't own a boat, but I love these old outboard motors from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. The designs were amazing, the paint jobs were great, and I don't know if they work, but I'm happy just to look at them. And I think what he, like he's in his mind thinking, that's the most of these It's a nice old boat. Yeah. It's a 1956 feather craft. Oh, okay. Nice. I couldn't make out what he said this boat was. I think he said 1956 something craft, but I'm not sure what he said. If anybody could make that out, let me know. Or if you know what this boat is, let me know in the comments.
Here's the second roller racer I've seen at the show this year. And I think that's probably the second roller racer I've seen in probably 20 or 30 years. Those were really popular back in the late 80s. Here's a ShopRite tractor trailer from 1995. He's asking $24 for it. It's not in the best condition though. The box has a big water stain on the bottom. For this thing? But uh, I do like seeing those. I don't know why. I like ShopRite, Stop and Shop, you know, any store like that on a tractor trailer for some reason I find interesting. Here's an old Texas Instruments calculator from the probably the early 70s, I'm guessing. And normally I don't collect calculators, but I do like Texas Instruments products like this from the 70s and 60s. I just find them really fascinating. And uh, if you've seen my um, Brody Park flea market video this year, I actually did end up buying a similar one to that. Seventy-five, it looks like, but I don't know if it's original or not. It's hard to tell. This got me excited for a second. This MSA gas mask box. I thought it was probably a Clearview gas mask from the 60s, which can go for a couple hundred dollars potentially, but sadly the box was empty. Oh. This one's not in there? Not in there. What's that? It's a flute. I know it's a flute. What's Martocchio's? Oh, it's a music store right in the center of Simsbury. It's, um, oh. I think it's down near St. Mary's. It's on a corner of uh, Pride Street. Yeah. Um, Delilah went to school with some of the Martocchio's. Oh. Also up in the... Hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been at this flea market for a few hours now, and I'm getting a little hungry. So let's take a walk over to the food court and see what they've got. I would say the food here is pretty good. It's a lot of fried food, of course, and fair food, that type of stuff. So definitely not healthy. And the prices are a bit high, and there's almost never anywhere to sit. So other than that, though, it's pretty good. I would say if you are coming out here, if you have a foldable chair, that would be really helpful, uh, but we ended up having to stand and eat. I've eaten at this Italian place a couple times before. It's not bad. The pizza's actually pretty good. It's five dollars a slice, so it's you know it's not cheap, but it's not outrageous either. But that seemed kind of boring, so excited to get something else. got a roast beef sandwich place over there to the right. It looks pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of roast beef sandwiches though. And straight ahead they have that burger bar. I had a burger there maybe once or twice before. Those are really good burgers so I can highly recommend those. It does take a while to cook them though but you know that's to be expected for something like that. Hmm. Yeah.
place that I go pretty much every time is this French fry stand. They're freshly cut fries, and they are really good. I mean, there's nothing to complain about. If you like French fries, this is definitely the place to go. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. Uh, large fry? Large fry? Yeah. Uh, $10. I think french fries with ketchup is probably one of my top five foods of all time. Totally unhealthy, but tastes so good. And there you have it. That's the end of part three of the May 2023 Brimfield Flea Market. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. i got a lot more videos coming up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.